Al Jazeera's Alan Fisher reporting live from Washington. Many thanks, Alan. Uh, Christine Bazina is a senior fellow and head of the geopolitics team at the German Marshall Fund's Alliance for Securing Democracy. She joins us now live from Washington. Good to have you with us, uh, Christine. Are these Hi. sanctions targeting the right institutions and people? These are very significant sanctions that the U.S. and also European partners have passed. If we look at the U U.S. sanctions today, we, they are addressing very large banks um, that control a very significant portion of the of the Russian economy, as well as, for example, these import um, uh, so export restrictions to to for high tech goods to Russia would limit Russia's space and other high tech sectors, which would of course. Uh, have long-term pain on the country. This is very important, and many have argued in some ways is more important than swift sanctions, which many, including the Ukrainians, have been calling for, uh, because there are ways around swift, uh, swift um, but if you, if the banks themselves are not allowed to interact with uh, dollars, with pounds, with euros, then that really does have a lot of bite. Uh, but then there's a second question on top of that, which is what hasn't been done. And sure, you can do this and you can go after the very symbolic and powerful move of sanctioning, uh, of pulling Russia out of the SWIFT system. Uh, and many ask, why not do more right now on the eve of another terrible night in Kiev and across Ukraine? President Biden uh, insists that, that U.S. troops won't engage on the ground. Uh, what do you make of the West's support of Ukraine over the last two years, the last few months in particular. Um, has it left Ukraine open to, to the inevitable? How much blame should the West and NATO be shouldering for what's happened here? I think many countries in the West should do a reckoning uh, about this situation. There's been a lot of surprise uh, in many parts, uh, many countries, that this actually came to pass, that it isn't a small localized activity in Donetsk and Luhansk, that it isn't uh, something just involving subterfuge, as we saw in Crimea, but a full-on missile-driven, now followed by tanks and soldiers on the ground invasion of Ukraine, the shock that that could actually come to pass. The shock uh, is really also part of why many didn't think this would happen and didn't provide what I would consider sufficient arms and military su to support to Ukraine in past months. But more importantly, over the last eight years, we've seen uh, Russia have this belligerent posture towards Ukraine taking territory because it wants to since 2014, which would have given Ukraine plenty of time to provide, uh, to build up a sufficient defense to protect itself better than it can today. And today we're in a different place than we were 36 hours ago, 48 hours ago, a week ago, when additional defensive arms would have been able to make it in and been absorbed. That is not the case where we are at this particular moment in this active onslaught. And so, you know, could the having an iron dome in Ukraine made a difference? Uh, perhaps having the international community say, we view your perception, the U.S. intelligence, as correct. We believe that you, because you want to join us and are in the process of becoming democratic enough, um, free enough, uh, developed enough to join us while you are doing that, we have your back. I don't think there was enough of that in the weeks, months and years prior. Christine, really good to talk to you. Many thanks indeed. Christine Bozina there in Washington.